there's, there's, there's sort of two questions forming here, um, and, and maybe you'll be able to decipher how to, how to answer this, this ambiguous double question, which is that we're wounded in relationship, we heal in relationship. We are wounded in relationship early in life because we don't, be, like, I don't know that I am. I only know that I experience mother. I only, you know, I only know that I experience mother, the role might not be my actual biological mother or even a female, but that is how I come, that is how my self-identity, my self-understanding turns on is in relationship with her. So wherever her wounds and her failings are to love and support me are the places that will be left behind, like will be left wounded in me later. Um, And so it's later when we're able to feel our suffering that old pain and feel safe at the same time, either because we feel safe with our own sort of higher witness in a self-compassion way, or safe because we're in a therapeutic relationship, or maybe safe because we perceive, you know, le- you know, legitimately or not, that we are in relationship with a with a higher power in some way that's allowing us to feel this pain and know that we are still loved and we're still safe to sort of finish that. But somewhere in the middle, there is relationships that maybe on some level we want to heal us, but actually just simultaneously reinforce our calves while triggering our cubs. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about these relationships that may or may not seem like they're going to heal us because, oh, here's... There's a part of me that's missing. I, I can get it with this other person, but that right. other person only ends up being, you know, the awful fit, the awfully perfect fit for our own issues. And then we end up in, you know, unhealthy relationships. Can you talk a little bit about how we can be guided into these unhealthy relationships by our cubs and cabs and what that might look like? I guess that is the question, what that might look like. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. What I think happens in the beginning is that you find uh, another human being uh, that, as you say, it feels like the potential's there for completion. She or he will complete me. But what that really means is that these deficits, these emotional deficits that are a legacy from failures of love are finally going to be met by this person and in the beginning this is the thing about falling in love it feels like they are Mm. it's like oh my god i find you know finally and so it's like all of that woundedness and all you know it's like it's all healed to this other person uh the the thing that we don't know is that these deficits can never actually be made up for They'll never, no, nobody can make up for that. Once they're gone, they're gone. The only thing to do with them is to grieve them, is just to feel them. Then, once we feel them, we can become conscious of them. And then we can consciously utilize a relationship, an intimate relationship with the other, to heal. We can, we can consciously ask for what it is that would make us feel good with another person. But until we're conscious of them, they're always going to feel like they're completing us or we have expectations of them that are too large. They just intuitively know that that too much is being asked of them. And of course, this is happening both ways. Your partner has the same kind of wounds and you have your wounds are like these interacting sensitivities and templates that come together, as you say, uh, perfectly to bring all this up as a kind of uh, exquisite reenactment of your respective trauma signatures. And I think there's, there's some kind of intelligence about this in the universe, actually, that ultimately this is, uh, be, it, it carries the potential of our healing. I think that's why we meet the right person for this, and the ultimate purpose of that is so that we can heal. But there's no way the other person can heal us. But we unconsciously feel like, finally, like, I was talking to a friend, 
the other day about being in an ayahuasca ceremony, and I was regressed. I was about two years old, and I was in terrible pain, terrible sorrow, heartbreak. And then, then one of the guides, I heard footsteps coming towards me, and this from this really young place inside of me said, oh, finally, someone's coming to pick me up. Hmm. I just waited. I was anticipating them, and I couldn't, oh, finally, I'll be able to. And they walked right on by. And then the next person would come and say, oh, okay, well, this person's surely coming to pick. Someone, for God's sake, someone's coming to pick me up here. I, they've got to. I mean, I can't. This is, this is terrible. Nobody came hmm. mm -hmm. to pick me up. And, of course, it was this early reenactment. So when we meet someone as adults, that unconscious expectation is that maybe this person will be the person to come and pick me up. Finally, they will comfort me. But because it's unconscious, it's not explicit, and it just uh, becomes uh, a reenactment where we're just triggering each other into these early wounds and leaking uh, into our core unconscious beliefs. And then uh, we start treating our beloved as if they're the enemy and as if they're attacking us. And they become the other uh, who doesn't love us? But of course, that's an early reenactment of uh, of that trauma. So, so uh, nevertheless, as you say, uh, that our hearts are broken in relationship, and therefore, our only hope for healing ultimately is in and through relationship. But that only happens through two people who are, uh, have made decisions to do their own healing journeys. Mm -hmm. And then they can consciously come to the other and state explicitly, hey, you know, I'm feeling really miserable. Uh, could you hold me, you know, for a little while so I can just kind of relax and, and breathe? And that, that both people, they know what's going on and it's fine, it's negotiated. So you can you can start to be that if it's conscious for each other. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, my definition of healing mm -hmm. is is very simple. It's the capacity to deeply relax in the presence of another who you love. Mm -hmm. That's it. As mm -hmm. soon as you can relax and be yourself, you're you know, you're healed. Mm -hmm. But getting there is not as simple as that. For sure. Yes, yeah, so what I'm hearing is is something along the lines of, um, and and you know, obviously correct me, but everything that you having said and sort of my simple way of understanding it myself is uh, is that we we come in with these childhood wounds, and there's some sort of mysterious something that's leading us to another person who might meet our wounds so perfectly that that it drives us to connect with each other and be very vulnerable with each other so that these wounds can heal, but neither of those people are actually healed. And so what ends up happening is we both show up thinking that we're adults, but we're actually two children expecting the other and perceiving the other as being the incomplete parent, hoping that they will parent us again. But they can't parent us because they're children as well. And so we end up fighting back and forth. We end up codependent, like basically children with each other with no parent in sight, um, expecting the other to parent. And it becomes you know, anywhere from a really shitty relationship to a profoundly abusive, you know, abuser victim back and forth sort of situation. Um, and that the only way we can truly heal in relationship is get to the point where we're actually both adults or adult enough to be able to know when to ask the other person to adult so that we can regress for a moment and adult ourselves with their support and vice versa. So like finding a secure relationship to grow into. Um, and until we have a sense that we're showing up as children and there's a bunch of like childish reactive wounds inside of us and we'll have a tendency to see the other as our, essentially all the, as, as all the ways that our parents failed and fucked us up, um, right. <laughs> then we're never going to be able to truly grow up and be in that, that loving relationship. And that has to be a mutual decision. Um, because otherwise the, the relationship isn't going to move forward in a healing and healthy way. <laughs>